Carbon monoxide, the silent killer. Carbon monoxide is the number one cause of poisoning deaths in the United States. Approximately 2,100 people die from carbon monoxide poisoning each year, and over 10,000 are injured. One of the reasons that carbon monoxide is so dangerous is because we are unable to notice this colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas that kills so quickly. Without the use of a carbon monoxide detector, we are helpless. That's why it's important to understand where carbon monoxide is found, how carbon monoxide affects us, and what we can do to prevent carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide can be found in many places around our homes. Clothes dryers, heating systems, automobiles, and kitchen stoves are all sources of carbon monoxide. Our bodies naturally make a very small amount of carbon monoxide, but we can only ingest a very small amount from outside sources. We ingest carbon monoxide through the air that we breathe, and the severity of carbon monoxide poisoning depends on the concentration of the carbon monoxide and the time we are exposed to excessive amounts of carbon monoxide poisoning. According to the U.S. Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Association, the maximum amount of carbon monoxide we should inhale in normal air is 50 parts per million. Carbon monoxide can only be inhaled in small amounts because of its chemical properties. Carbon monoxide is held together by a partial triple bond, which means it does not come apart easily. It also has a small dipole moment meaning it's a polar molecule with a negative charge on the oxygen atom. This chemical property makes the molecule very attracted to hemoglobin, the molecule in the blood that carries oxygen. For this reason, it is considered an asphyxiant, which means that it displaces oxygen. Under normal conditions, oxygen is inhaled through the lungs and is transported through the body by hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has four binding sites for oxygen. When oxygen binds to hemoglobin, it forms oxyhemoglobin. Oxyhemoglobin separates to release oxygen when blood reaches tissues in the body. Carbon monoxide poisoning disrupts this process by increasing the oxygen's affinity for hemoglobin so that it does not separate from the hemoglobin and reach the tissues. When carbon monoxide enters the lungs, it binds to hemoglobin and forms carboxyhemoglobin instead of oxyhemoglobin. This bond between the carbon monoxide and hemoglobin is approximately 200 times stronger than the oxygen bond, which is why the oxygen is unable to attach to the hemoglobin molecule and reach the tissues of the body. If oxygen does not reach vital tissues and organs in the body, carbon monoxide poisoning can lead to death. However, most of the common symptoms of carbon monoxide are easily confused with the cold or flu. These symptoms include headaches, dizziness, fatigue, nausea, and shortness of breath. It is important to move to another area with fresh air as quickly as possible. If symptoms are severe, carbon monoxide poisoning can be treated with hyperbaric oxygen in a hospital to displace the carbon monoxide in the blood. Receiving this treatment decreases the half-life of carbon monoxide, which is the amount of time it takes for the amount of carbon monoxide to decrease by half the original amount. The half-life of carbon monoxide can be reduced by 20 to 30 minutes with this treatment. Of course, the best way to combat carbon monoxide poisoning is by investing in a carbon monoxide detector. These machines can detect unsafe levels of carbon monoxide in your home and will sound an alarm if there's too much carbon monoxide in the air. Without this machine, we would be completely vulnerable to this silent killer.